Hello! In this video, we are going to prove the following theorem. 0 plus 0 is equal to 0. Now in this series, we are looking at a list of axioms for the complex numbers. And these axioms come from Metamath. All right, I'll leave a list of axioms and a link to Metamath in the description below. So let's remind ourselves what we're working with. So we have a set C called the set of complex numbers. And we have a subset of the complex numbers, R, called the set of real numbers. And we're given three elements of the complex numbers, 0, 1, and I. We're also given two binary operations on the set of complex numbers, addition and multiplication. Right, so given any two complex numbers A and B, A plus B is a complex number, and A times B is a complex number. And finally, we are given a relation on the set of real numbers called the less than relation. So given any two real numbers A and B, it might be the case that A is less than B, and we write that like this. Otherwise, we say A is not less than B. Okay, and from here, we have a list of axioms for the complex numbers. All right, and I'll have a list of those axioms in the description below. Now, in this video, we're going to have to keep in mind several of those axioms to prove this, right? Yeah, okay? So here are some of the axioms that we're going to be using. Well, axioms 1 and 2 tell us that the sum of any two real numbers is a real number. The product of any two real numbers is a real number. We have axiom three, which is the commutative law of multiplication. So given any two complex numbers A and B, A times B is equal to B times A. Axioms four and five are the associative laws of addition and multiplication. So given any three complex numbers a, b, and c, this equality holds and this equality holds. Axiom 6 is the distributive law. So given any three complex numbers a, b, and c, this equality is true. And we're going to be using axioms 9, 10, 11. Axiom 9 tells us for any real number a, a times 1 is equal to A. Axiom 10 and 11 tell us the following. Axiom 10 tells us, given any real number A, there exists a real number X such that A plus X is equal to 0. Axiom 11 tells us, given any non-zero real number A, there exists a real number x such that a times x is equal to 1. Okay, and we're going to be using two results that we have proven from our axiom system. One of those results is that 0 is a real number, and we're going to be using the left cancellation law of addition for real numbers, which we have proven. So what that tells us is, Given any three real numbers a, b, and c, if c plus a is equal to c plus b, then a is equal to b, right? And I'll leave links in the description to where we prove these results. So now, let's prove that 0 plus 0 is equal to 0. Notice that there is no axiom that tells us for every complex number a, a plus 0 is equal to a, or even for every real number a, a plus 0 is equal to a. So we're starting... We're eventually going to prove for every complex number a, a plus 0 is equal to a. But we're starting with here. We're starting with 0 plus 0 equals 0. So let's get into proving this result. So to start out the proof, let's first note that 0 is a real number. So since 0 is a real number, we're going to use axiom 10. Right? Since 0 is a real number, there must exist some real number, I'll call it c, 
such that 0 plus c is equal to 0. Now from here, we're going to split this up into two cases. We know that either c is equal to 0 or c is not equal to 0. We're going to show if c is equal to 0, then 0 plus 0 is equal to 0. And we're going to show if c is not equal to 0, then 0 plus 0 is equal to 0. If we can show these two statements are true, then it must follow that 0 plus 0 is equal to 0. Right? Because one of these has to be true. But no matter which one is true, it always follows that 0 plus 0 is equal to 0. So we can conclude that 0 plus 0 is equal to 0. This inference rule from logic is called disjunction elimination. So that's really what we're applying here. We'll start with the first invocation. We're going to prove if c is equal to 0, then 0 plus 0 is equal to 0. Well, what happens if c is equal to 0? If c is equal to 0, then 0 plus 0 equals what? Well, we could substitute the second 0 for c, since they're equal, right? We're just applying the substitution property of equality. And we know that 0 plus c is equal to 0. So then this shows that 0 plus 0 is equal to 0, right? That's it. This covers the case c is equal to 0. So that proves the first implication. Now we're going to prove the second implication. And to do that, let's make the assumption c is not equal to 0. From here, we're going to logically deduce that 0 plus 0 is equal to 0. Well, in the case where c is not equal to 0, well then, c is a non-zero real number. So, applying axiom 11, there must exist some real number, I'll call y, such that c times y is equal to 1. I'm going to erase this stuff now. And now the trick is the following. We're going to perform c times y times 0. Well, we know that c times y is equal to 1. So this is just 1 times 0. By the commutative law for multiplication, this is 0 times 1. And by axiom 9, we have for every complex number a, or not complex number, we have for every real number a, a times 1 is equal to a. So in particular, 0 times 1 is equal to 0. So this shows cy times 0 is equal to 0. Right, but the trick is as follows. We're going to perform 0y times 0 plus 0. And we're going to show this is equal to 0y times 0 plus 0 plus 0, and then apply the cancellation law. So what we're going to do is we're going to replace this 0 with 0 plus c. Right, we can do that because they're equal. Well, then we get this. But then, applying the distributive law, we can distribute the 0y across this parentheses. And we get this. But then, we're going to simplify 0y times c down to 0. Right? Because we will be able to do that. Because notice, uh, applying the commutative of all for multiplication, 0 times y is equal to y times 0. So we get that. But then, applying the commutative law for multiplication again, we swap y times 0 and c around. We get that. Then, applying the associative law for multiplication, we can move the parentheses around c times y. We get that. But then, cy times 0 is equal to 0. So we can replace that with 0. And then, applying the associative law for addition, we can move these parentheses around the 0 plus 0. So we're left with 0y times 0 plus 0 plus 0. So we have shown that this quantity plus 0 is equal to this same quantity plus 0 plus 0. And because we know that the sum of any two real numbers is a real number, the product of any two real numbers is a real number, we're just working with real numbers here. So 
we can apply the left cancellation law of addition for real numbers and cancel out the zero y times zeros. So we're left with zero equals zero plus zero. Or in other words, zero plus zero is equal to zero. So that's it. Under the assumption that c is not equal to zero, we've logically deduced that zero plus zero is equal to zero. So what have we shown here? We have shown if c is equal to zero, then zero plus zero is equal to zero. And we've shown if c is not equal to zero, then zero plus zero is equal to zero. Well, one of these has to be true. So no matter what, it follows that zero plus zero is equal to zero. So that's it. This completes the proof. Now you could also prove this a different way. What you could have done, instead of splitting it up into two different cases, either c is equal to zero or c is not equal to zero, we assume for a contradiction c is not equal to zero. You end up deducing zero plus zero equals zero. So we have zero plus zero equal to zero, but we also know zero is equal to zero plus c. So we have zero plus zero equal to zero plus c. So then applying the cancellation law, you get zero equals c. So we have c equal to zero and c is not equal to zero. So this contradicts our assumption that c is not equal to zero. So assuming c is not equal to zero leads us to a contradiction. So we must instead have c is equal to zero. So then since c is equal to zero, we immediately obtain zero plus zero is equal to zero. So you could have written the proof that way as well. But you can see why we didn't do a proof by contradiction here. Because when we make the assumption c is not equal to zero, we ended up deducing the conclusion we wanted to reach before we reached a contradiction. So that's the reason why we did it this way. And so yeah, that's pretty much it for this video.